a big hello and a warm welcome to all of you amazing and beautiful people out there welcome to my channel and welcome to this collective reading the intention behind this collective reading is to help you raise your vibration and collectively all those people who resonate with it can help to raise the vibration of planet earth helping in its movement from 3d to 5d of course we are not the doers so all credit goes to masters and source so Whosoever I'm channeling today, first of all, you are very much interested in inner work. You're very much interested in meditation. You also make sure that this is the priority of your life, your healing, your upliftment. Because what else are we here to do? What is it that we're here to do, literally? who have given us this wonderful opportunity to be the volunteering vessels on planet earth at this lovely time of transformation at the ascending dwapar yuga so what i can pick on is the most intense or the most strong energy today in the collective is of someone who now knows what is the reason of their suffering what is the reason behind their suffering and misery so whosoever resonates with this you know now either this is happening to you or you're figuring it out or it has already happened with you but now you have to practically apply it but in my opinion once you figure it out and you get the complete confirmation you can literally use it like this and it can change so much in your life so much of your energy can shift in really a short span of time if you use it and if you apply it so you know who is who is causing or what is the reason behind your suffering or your misery or whenever it happens in phases and in cycles and on and off maybe it doesn't happen all the time but whenever it does it always creates havoc some kind of issue some kind of problem blockages I mean, things can happen literally in a flow, but you're not able to think laterally. You are thinking vertically at this point in time. There are obviously more people in the collective who are going through this right now. You must be thinking that in the past you made some decisions based on your programming, right? Whatever decisions you made. Before your awakening, that is before you became woke or whatever stage of wokeness you are at right now so you were operating on a program literally like the computer has a program the phone has a program all the devices the electronic gadgets have a program even washing machine has a program fridge has a program everything is running on a program so you've realized that before your awakening you were operating on a certain program and you were in a limbo state so whatever you were doing you were not really mindfully doing it you were not thinking too much about it it was just going on but how was that problematic it was problematic because even at that time you were miserable you were suffering now also there's a certain level of misery but it's not that bad i mean of course, something must have triggered you to reach to a place where you feel or you started feeling suddenly that you're awakened. Why would you say you're awakened? Why do, do people say they are awakened? Like what makes them say that they're awakened or they're not awakened? Of course, it's because the third eye opens up, the third eye chakra. Now, what is so unique about your third eye or your dual eyes? The third eye, which you cannot even see, physically anatomy wise you cannot see but you can obviously feel it the presence of third eye is very very intense like those who feel it they know it is because as long as you are looking at the world from the dual eyes so third eye is basically the eye that is connected with source singularity whereas the duality is connected with your physical eyes however practically practically how does it work practically it works when we don't see the world from the programmed reality we see the world as how it is i mean you can see through the nonsense 
that celebrities are telling people and how so many people are blindly literally blindly worshiping celebrities they don't look at their lifestyle they don't look at what they promote they don't look at what they talk about people are actually worshiping those people who are simply entertaining them and by entertainment it's actually they are distracting you from the reality in simple words so they are asking you to buy expensive stuff they are asking you to buy fancy cars they are telling you to wear certain type of clothes and people are just doing that and people have totally forgotten about the real problems like there are no trees around there are too many buildings the education system is warped or the political system is strange i mean there are so many things that are happening that need our attention but instead of paying attention to that we are just paying attention at the clothes the food or the type of shelter we should have whereas these are literally basic things animals have it birds have it even birds can create their shelter and they create like the shelter that they actually need no animal or birds or any any other being for that matter they never hold on to anything they never keep anything that's not required i mean they also beautify their spaces they also have beautiful architecture i'm not denying that but the way human beings hoard is another level of mental problem and i've seen hoarders in real life and i think celebrities are also hoarders but they just organize their hoard much better than any other hoarder who's suffering from this disease like their disease is evident because they don't have the space they don't have the resources so it looks like okay this is such a stupid person or this person is mentally ill or this person is out of control they don't know what they're doing but really many people are hoarders it's just that for some people it is evident and for some people it's not evident but why are people hoarding and when i say hoarding i don't mean just things furniture or clothes or shoes people are holding on to a lot of money also a lot of property money which they actually don't need they obviously cannot carry any of this hoard with them to the grave it ends right there so whatever happens to all the hard work that people put into attaining these materialistic things is actually just a total waste of time so either you should do what you love either you should just believe in uh, in source like source is your provider and whatever you need you will get it i mean there has to be like literally in this case a blind faith i mean i don't i don't promote blind faith especially if it's for celebrities or you know materialistic things or people who talk about materialism don't even have blind faith on a person have blind faith on source that invisible supreme energy which always takes care of you instead of getting worried the people whose energy is popping out they have realized that all of this worry and all of this unnecessary overthinking is actually not taking them anywhere it's just keeping them stuck in the same place or it's like the same things are happening over and over again they solve the problem and then it looks fine and then after a week 10 days it's the same problem all over again or the problem keeps coming back after every 2 months or 3 months or 6 months or a year because that cycle of the old programming you know because your third eye is awakened but this is a gradual process even if you are awakening you're not going to awaken in one go your awakening is a gradual process but once your third eye opens up and once you can see the things as they are not just celebrities but what you eat what you wear what type of friends you have many people after awakening stop going out they don't go out they don't party so much they don't hang out with people so much because they realize that all of this is totally unnecessary why am i hanging out with so many people every saturday or every friday and why every friday why not monday why not tuesday why not wednesday why friday and saturday what is this weekend got to do with me hanging out with so many people oh that makes me happy but can't i be happy on a monday or a tuesday or a wednesday or a thursday why do i have to wait till friday to feel happy 
Why do I have to wait till Friday to party or listen to music or to dance? Can't I do that every day? Can't I like dance whenever I feel like dancing? In my own space, in my own privacy? Am I only going to be happy if I've had few drinks or a few shots? Not before that. Or meeting certain type of people, like even if it's not a group. Say you meet someone, a friend of yours who is very fancy, who's very rich. And every time this friend of yours comes to meet you, they come in their big car and the whole neighborhood is looking at them. And you're looking at them and you feel like very privileged of being their friend. But this friend of yours is coming to you. Of course, you also got something in you, which they are obviously attracted to. So they are showing interest in you. I mean, everybody is with everybody because in some way it validates their existence. So when your third eye starts working, you actually start questioning as to why am I doing certain things in a certain way? That's where things start changing and that's where you start questioning everything, which is why your family members, your friends, or if you're in a relationship, husband, wife, or boyfriend, girlfriend, whosoever you're dating, whosoever you're with, married to, if you're not married also, then whosoever likes you, you maybe have a future plan and you look at this person and you say, hey, I don't want to do this. I mean, I don't want to do this relationship or this commitment or even this future, futuristic goal making or planning because it's going to give me something in the future or it's going to give me some kind of security, some kind of uh, feeling of like, yeah, I'm getting validated. I don't want to do all of that. So people around you, when you stop doing those things that everybody is doing. So if 100 out of 80% people are jumping into a well or jumping out down the building because everybody is saying it's trending, it's cool to jump into the well to do this or to do that. And 20% don't do it. Even if those 80% are making it look like the best thing on the planet, best thing like the best biggest achievement they still don't do it that doesn't mean that these 20 percent people who could be less in number are not right yeah did i say that correctly so 20 percent people who are not following the trend or the crowd they could be right and those 80 percent could be totally wrong as per this collective reading i'm being shown that all those people who are not following other people blindly, people blindly, or they're questioning, why do I even have to do this? Like, why do I have to buy a branded t-shirt when I can get the same kind of t-shirt at probably dirt cheap rates? I mean, some brands are very expensive. And I can get the same thing, the same quality in $10. Why should I not get the one which is in $10? I mean, they will logically ask. Of course, if there's a need, if they really feel that they, they need to spend or they must spend $1,000 on something important that can, that can help them, that can do something good to them, why not? Then again, it's about quality and not quantity. So all these people, the 20% people, are about quality. And I'm channeling those quality 20% people who can see from their third eye, who are awakened, the tenth door. In Hindi, we say dasham dwar. The tenth door is actually the crown of the head, but the location is, this, this is where the tenth gate is, tenth gate or tenth door. It's like when you're a baby, this part is very soft. Isn't that interesting? Babies have this part very soft. It's called Brahmarandra in Hindi or door to God. But you see, this is this is from this is where it's get activated. The pituitary gland, the pineal gland is pretty much responsible for helping this tenth door to get activated. The pineal gland is uh, responsible for secreting melatonin and it manages the circadian rhythm of the body, which is so important. And if you look at the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland manages hormones. The pituitary gland manages the neurohormones that help us to understand or to feel love, stress, and fear, these three emotions, in a balanced way. So those people who actually started meditating and they started doing inner work or they started doing therapy, 
your therapist if it's a spiritualist therapist must have told you to work on yourself like must have asked you to sit still told you to meditate like i ask everyone to practice solar plexus mantra how many do it that's totally up to them i can only give people the information but until and unless they're not going to do it themselves and they're not going to figure it out the change it brings in their life it's really impossible for them to also know what i'm saying some people think that therapist or therapy should be only about just giving some uh, definitions and meanings and just listening and just okay i'm not doing that with people the way i heal people is i also show them their flaws and i also give them certain exercises and certain practices people who are intelligent those who have lateral thinking mind not vertical thinking they are very creative i have seen they are so creative that every time a flaw is given to them they figure out a creative way to fix it either they are going to do it themselves or they are going to ask me to do it and it always works those who have tried it it has worked especially people who come from the western part of the world i have noticed there are no biases i'm not biased towards anyone but i have noticed when we are sitting on top of the treasure we don't know the value of the treasure so this solar plexus mantra or the information on chakras information on meditation actually is from the eastern world but the people in the eastern world are not doing much of practice but those who do so of course i do have people who do it and some of the people have actually written to me or they have met me personally and told me or they have told me in the sessions in the private readings one on one sessions and therapies that they were watching my videos and they heard this solar plexus chant or solar plexus mantra and they started doing it and ever since they've started doing it they feel so detached from the worldly world it automatically happens like you don't even have to you don't have to do much i think the effort is the effort that goes into this is you have to sit still twice in a day morning and evening 15 minutes or 20 minutes it doesn't even want you to do more and you have to in between just think about this sound this mantra or this chant so whether you do it after every 3 hours or you do it twice in a day or you do it five times in a day you break it up and you you do it or you do it while you're doing your work like you have a job or a business where you can't really sit down too much so you mentally keep doing it or you watch ramayan or you listen to ramayan all day long like you're connected with ramayan somehow you know some story is always in your head so it automatically makes you connect with that energy because the sound the solar plexus sound is very powerful and especially if you if you do it with the third eye oh my god it has really amazing miraculous effects whosoever i'm channeling today first of all you are very much interested in inner work you're very much interested in meditation you also make sure that this is the priority of your life your healing your upliftment because what else are we here to do what is it that we are here to do literally i mean anything else that we do other than survival other than survival because survival is also something which is happening on its own we don't have to really work so hard towards our survival but we are programmed lots and lots of people are actually programmed to remain stuck in the survival energy they don't have the faith they literally don't have the faith that it's all going to be fine it's all going to work out they don't drop the ego they they have so much faith in the mind they are so much into the head space they're so much into the vertical thinking that when you're in the vertical thinking you literally don't have ideas but when you're in the lateral thinking you're so creative i mean positivity also comes from lateral thinking cuz i mean logically i want to ask this question to whoever is having any kind of doubt what do we really attain if we worry if we worry what do we attain what do we achieve on the contrary we also block all the good things that are coming to us we are simply not in the energy not in the right mental space to even see the good ideas or even feel grateful as soon as you shift from that energy of i don't want to worry anymore i don't want to overthink anymore it's just you just have to you know do it like this 
every time a negative thought comes to you and you're like oh okay 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 just stop 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 stay right there don't don't you do your thing let me do my thing so when we are able to do it we are able to shift our energy and we do it step by step by step so the cool thing is that the one or the ones that i'm picking on the energy that i'm picking on today is of these really high vibrational people who have figured out or they are figuring it out they are literally either figuring it out they have literally reached to that point where they have just they're just going to pick it up you have the hammer and you have the nail and in one shot you can get the right spot you can put the nail in the right spot either they are right there or they're just hovering around it hovering around the idea okay and then there are some who who are actually going through this epiphany like this mind blowing epiphany and it's like wow you have the answer right now and you know and all the great masters have said it that you are suffering you are suffering you are suffering or you are miserable anybody who's feeling miserable right now please comment right now and once i give you the answer think about it pause the video and tell me if that's correct or not okay then you can write a fresh new comment under it you are suffering right now or anybody who suffers anyone who's suffering people are miserable because of their desires you can never be miserable or you can never suffer if you're not thinking about the desire there has to be a desire especially if you are depressed or if you are anxious if you are low if you are sad there is always there is always a desire or multiple desires a cluster of desires attached to that one core desire and if you don't have that desire or if you just don't think about that desire if you let it go away if you just say okay fine i don't care about this desire life becomes so much better and so much easier everything is so much smooth after that i mean you don't feel the pressure you want to eat an ice cream you'll go and eat it you can actually do whatever you want to do you can paint a picture you can write a book you can dance sing and you'll also start living in the here and now i mean you can live in today there's no need to live in tomorrow people who are living in tomorrow land are usually people who have desires lots of desires or one desire that's driving them crazy in the twin flame world also why are people suffering because they have the desire for physical union with their divine masculine or divine feminine and that one desire is so intense that it makes their life look so bad i mean they are constantly comparing themselves with the karmics or with the same person with whom they have the desire like i wish if i had a life like this then i would have had this person i mean desire makes you feel so incomplete and let me tell you these flag bearers the torch bearers of desires are actually the fancy people who show off a lot so anybody who has a big ego is going to show off what they have and they're going to show it off in style they're going to show show it off as if they are the happiest person on this planet i mean a happy person doesn't need to show it off a beautiful person like physically beautiful man or woman who know that they're beautiful they don't need to show it off they just know it and you know it that this person is beautiful wherever they go everyone is going to say hey you're beautiful even if they don't say it they just know it right they don't need to show it off but people who don't have it they show it off even more and in the world that we are living in it's very crazy but suddenly people have started worshiping all these people who are not only flaunting their desires i mean they're just it's just they're just bullshitting trust me they're not happy 
I know it. I've worked with a lot of people like that. I've worked with so many people like that. I've hung out with them. And after a while, I've, of course, they don't know I'm a 5.2 projector or I'm into this spirituality, of which, which is something I've started talking about now. Back then, I was not obviously talking about it. They would start telling me about all of their problems. And I would be like thinking, they got like 10,000 people worshipping them. And they are so sad and miserable. And when I asked them, why are you sad? Why are you miserable? They all told me, I want to do this. I want to do that. It's not happening. It's not working out. And if I tell them, if it's not working out, why don't you just drop it? Why don't you let it go? Why do you want it so desperately when this thing is giving you so much pain? They cannot drop it. They cannot drop the attachment with it. I mean, I'm not saying stop doing whatever you're doing, but at least you can drop the attachment with that thing. But they simply cannot do it. Even if I ask them, isn't this thing making you unhappy? Don't you feel that something that's making you unhappy, you should not give it so much mental space or space in your life overall? They hear these words, but they cannot connect with it. So the people I'm talking to right now, the energy that I've picked up, I have a strong feeling, an intuitive feeling that some of you can pick it. Some of you are just tired of being miserable. Some of you are just tired of suffering. Lateral thinking makes you creative. Lateral thinking makes you solution oriented. Lateral thinking makes you drop that attachment or that desire. So you want to just let it go. If it's making you so unhappy, what's the point holding on to it? So you can get into personal reading sessions with me and you can get into therapy with me. And if you love my content, then you can show your support by becoming my Patreon. All of these links are given in the description box. However, if you connect with me for a personal session or for therapy, then kindly do not share everything in advance. Once the session is booked and I have scheduled the time for you, then we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and everything will be discussed over there. So as I can see the card strength, I'm being shown that whosoever resonates with this, you are learning to master your fears and anxieties so that you can be courageous and daring and also not be miserable not let your desires overpower you not let your desires get the better of you because you know as you think creatively you have so many solutions you know that if you want to be successful and if you want to be happy then the focus should be believing in yourself and source i mean i always say this believe in source source imagine the energy of source supreme energy it's also inside of you. The supreme energy that runs the world, that energy is also inside of you. Now this is the knowledge that comes from your third eye. This is the knowledge that comes from your 10th door. Because you meditate, when you meditate, when you connect with your third eye and when you give the right Bij Mantra to it, then automatically that door opens up and the knowledge comes into your life and you can practically feel it it's not just about you know you're just saying it but you can practically feel it you can feel it yes i have support i have somebody taking care of me i have everything i need all my needs are getting fulfilled and i have the love i deserve i am loving and i'm lovable you know you feel it when you feel something you think about it you believe in it and then you know it it becomes a part of you so you can feel it. And once you start feeling it, the love in your body, in your DNA, then automatically your energy shifts. So yes, the strength card is also telling me that either it must be something like uh, there was self-doubt, low energy, lack of inner strength. That converts into after your healing or after this beautiful thought dawns you, you have strength, you have courage and you have influence. If you're not able to tap into the inner strength, in your, into your own inner strength, if you feel like some fear is really making you feel paralyzed, you're not able to think through it, then take a pen and paper, think about that feeling, 
and write down what is the desire associated with it and automatically you will know what's bothering you but it's up to you completely whether you want to cling on to that desire or you want to let it go because this information itself can do magic and wonder in anybody's life it can actually make you feel happy in seconds you can be happy you just have to know okay this is the desire and this is making me sad because i feel i don't have it right now and i want it right now and this want this need this is making me feel that i'm not worthy of it i'm unworthy of it okay what if i don't want it right now what if i don't need it right now i can be happy without it i am happy without it i'm existing without it everything is going fine i'm breathing i'm living i'm watching this video what's the big deal even if you have your desire whatever physical desire it is for how long can you keep holding on to it like literally physically also if it's a person maybe for some time they'll be okay with you holding them like holding them literally but after some time they will be like okay let me go i need to do my things right if it's a car if it's a house or if it's a piece of jewelry for how long can you just keep holding it holding on to it keep wearing it or keep sitting in the car keep driving the car i mean for a house also somebody who is very hooked on to property like i want this house i want my own house what are they really clinging on to it's not the house it's the feeling of my own in my name so once it's in your name it's your own then what that's it you fulfill your desire your desire is complete now what so this is where i'm going to close this channeling session i will see you in the next one one love peace out and vitri duram